Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the third and final day of my fishing charter with Greg and Tonki from the south of France. In this video, we will be embarking on a straight line mission across America's greatest treasure, the Florida Everglades, where along the way, we'll encounter a multitude of aquatic species, the scorching Florida sun, and a few very close encounters with literal dinosaurs that could potentially turn fatal if one is so determined to be negligent. But enough about that. If we manage to keep our limbs out of the jaws of these curious reptilian rascals, we are aiming for the coveted platinum score with a deviation of no greater than 25 meters. And considering the canal is only about 19 meters wide, I think we have it in the bag unless some unforeseen event happens to put sugar in our gas tank. I honestly can't think of anything that could possibly go wrong. But before we embark on our adventure, are we recording? And yes, we are. All right, <laughs> enough of that, enough of that. If any of you guys get the reference, drop it in the comments below. I just wanted to have a little bit of fun considering my anglers are from Europe. Anyway, and considering that the canal is it's just a straight line, basically. Anyway, so today's the third and final day of fishing with my anglers, Greg and Tanguy. They're from the south of France. And, um, you know, if you haven't seen the previous two other videos, I've got a little series right there you can click on and watch. First day we fished Miami for peacock bass. Second day we went to also the Everglades, but a different spot that we kind of nicknamed the jungle. It's unlike anywhere else that you can possibly fish here in Southeast Florida, and it's amazing. They caught them up there really well too, but I wanted to switch it up. These guys love catching largemouth bass over there in France, and I knew that, you know, we weren't really catching, we caught a few, but to have like a true largemouth day, you know, the tactics are so different from catching peacocks to largemouth, so wanted to switch it up, give them a little taste of what they were used to, and a taste of what Florida has to offer because they don't catch as many fish in France as we do in Florida, particularly relating to bass. So um, decided to show them what it's all about. Here we go. Okay, Tungi's on the board with two, no, three fish today so far. And Greg, I don't know, what are you doing, man? Where are you? He, Greg did miss a big blow up. But we're throwing big top waters and might make a move here in a second. I don't know. As it's first thing in the morning and we're in the Everglades, I had the guys start out with top water. Tongi was throwing this, I think it was some uh, depths spook style bait and Greg was throwing, he was throwing this depths little frog, I can't think of the name of it, but it just, the, the scenery just looks so perfect for top water, but the bite just wasn't there. I checked the barometric pressure the night before and it was super high. Uh, forecasted to be super high the day that I was fishing Greg and Tongi in the glades. So about 45 minutes, we only had one bite. Tongi had a really, really nice bass and I had to figure something out. These guys, they just wanted to throw top water nonstop. So I was like, okay, let me pick up a finesse technique, put some fish in the boat and see if I can get them to change their mind. So I tied on a worm and wouldn't you know it, it literally only took two casts. today. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, better. Maybe. Alright, a little bit better fish, nice. See we have Greg using the worm. And is it in there? Nope. Nope. Just Alright, that's awesome man. You're doing a great job. We made some adjustments. And uh we were throwing top water for a while. I tried even throwing a swim bait, like just like a regular gambler big easy, just to see if I can locate some fish for these guys and they weren't having that either. So I moved all the way down to the end of the canal and just started some finesse techniques and it's picking up some bites. I know these guys want to throw big baits, but right now the bass don't want big baits. Just yell if you want the net. All right. <laughs> okay, cool. Good, we might run out of lures. I hope not. Yeah. Yeah, that one bait is gambler. Elite. Elite. Elite two? Oh, almost. What were you saying? A Z? Or a C? Wow. Oh. Like this? Coffrenet. Coffrenet. <laughs> like a girl? Like a girlfriend? Coffrenet comme une meuf, il va dire. Coffrenet. Dirtying up my stomach. Hook up. Can't zoom out. My bad. Hey, there's a boat feed. Ah, but there you go. Hey, Lulu. Hey, Jules, boat feed. Oh, more drag. Tonga, you see how you pause uh, and it, it, was, it was sinking? Uh, That's tuck. when he ate. Oh my gosh. Oh, you leave it. Oh, cool. Cool. Okay, so cool. Cool. Come on, fish. There you yes. go. Yes. Good, the swim jig's yes. good. Swim jig. Okay. Okay. On the swim jig. That's an awesome job. These guys are going to make me buy a lot of lures when I get home. And Tongi's hooked up with the things like a six inch soft plastic jerk bait. Yeah, Tangi started with the five inch dart and now I upgraded him to the seven inch and he's still catching small fish. That's ridiculous. Do not be afraid to throw big lures. They still catch fish of all sizes. Here's the size difference. Obviously that's the five inch and there's the seven. I mean, not only you have the length difference, but it's also a much thicker profile.
Oh. Net? Oh, he's trying to eat the bait. Oh, my oh that's a good one. Kofka net. That was a good job. So Tongi's whacking them on soft plastic jerk baits. We're using a combination of the dart and some. Oh, what, what was that lure? It's a soft jack. Soft jerk jackal? Uh, no DRT. Oh, DRT. Fancy. <laughs> Very fancy. And then Greg, he's getting them on a. Um... Who makes that swim jig? I forgot. Kitek. Yeah, Kitek swim jig, and there was a Kitek trailer on there, but we switched over to a Rage Craw. It's working. And then these guys keep showing up every once in a while, but they don't mess with us. So between today, what you're watching in the video, and then yesterday when I fished Greg and Tongi, these were two of the hottest days that we've had so far this year in 2023. Uh, you know, I'm fishing them in the end of May, and that's when things really start to heat up. Super hot yesterday in the glades, and then, you know, today, Tongi, he went through an entire bottle of sunblock, spraying his hands and his legs. And then Greg, I don't know, he didn't plan too far in advance. So he, had a, he was sitting down on the gunnel after a few hours with uh, his rain jacket over his legs, trying to stay dry, or not dry, but trying to keep the sun off of him. I'm thinking dry because it's pouring right now and there's lightning. But needless to say, sitting down didn't slow Greg down whatsoever. Oh, good one, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Commando worms putting in some work. And Greg's trying to get a break from the sun. We all are, it's, it's hot. I mean, I don't know if you could see my feet, but they're red. Tongi, he is crazy. Oh, he's looking at us. Oh, he got him. Okay, before I roll this clip, let me just give you guys a little bit of information. So anytime that I have someone who's never fished in Florida before, especially in the glades, like the last spot that I took these guys to usually is infested with gators. I always just give my clients a heads up and tell them what to expect when we're near gators. I mean, typically, you know, one of two things happen. They just sit there like a statue and don't move. Or two, the gators will just make their way down the canal or they'll sink to the bottom. They get out of your way. They, they don't want anything to do with a boat or with humans. But every once in a while, every once in a while, you run into a gator that sees you or takes notice of you catching fish and, you know, maybe he's a little extra hungry or what, but they go after the fish and they kind of, they start hanging around the boat. They usually don't get too close, but they, they hang around because they want that free meal. So I always prep my anglers in advance that if they catch a fish near a gator, keep the rod down, don't let the fish jump near the gator, horse it in, or, you know, most importantly, don't cast a lure near a gator. I tell them they're so fast, they're faster than you think, and anything that gets near their mouth, they're gonna snap at it. Well, I don't know if it was the language barrier or maybe Greg just wasn't listening, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, well, he cast it at the gator's mouth and this is what happened. Oh, you got the alligator. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, this was my fault. Normally, I am a good chaperone and I don't let my anglers mess with the gators. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep, you're done. You're done. Oh look, he, he's tur he turned him. Wow, this poor alligator. Not only is he hooked by a French angler, but he got his bro his bottom jaw is broken. 
Oh my gosh. Uh, so, you, you grab his mouth like a bass. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh my gosh. It's not coming off. No, you have to break it. Don't, do not touch the alligator. Thank you. <laughs> so thankfully that crisis was averted for the most part. You know, I, I felt bad for that gator seeing its jaw split in half. Obviously it got into a fight with another gator and its jaw broke. Basically, you know, right here, just it was gone and it was two little spots flapping. But, you know, that gator was perfectly healthy. It was pretty big, about six feet. It wasn't malnourished. So, you know, it just proves what, you know, especially if you follow Gator Boy Chris on Instagram, he always says how these gators are so tough. And that's true, they're, they're millions of years old. They're the last living dinosaurs that we have on this earth. And they survive for a reason, because they're badass. Looking behind the boat, I could see the rain clouds they were coming in and um, we only had a few few minutes, about 30 minutes left of the trip. So kind of was paying attention to the rain. Greg and Tongi, they kept slaying bass. Greg kept catching bass while he was sitting. And you know, after that, we did have to wrap up the trip. And I just want to say I'm so thankful for both those guys, both Greg and Tongi, give you guys a big shout out. Thank you so much for coming all the way across the pond to come fish with me. I hope you had a good time and uh, you got to see what a little bit of what Florida's all about. So hopefully we can do it again, but I'm looking forward to seeing Greg and Tongi when I go to visit France. And also a big shout out to Greg's girlfriend, Marie. Thank you so much for coordinating and setting up the trip and booking it. Um, I really appreciate it. You guys are helping me live out my dream and I couldn't say thank you enough. And uh, also when I go to France, looking forward to seeing Julian and Severine as well. So it's gonna be a great time. Hopefully get that done next year and I'm gonna take you guys along for that ride. So with that being said, thanks to all the viewers for watching the video. If you wanna book a trip, my website's right here. Hit me up, flowbass.com. If you have any questions, you can hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. It's at flow.bass. Find me there, chat you up and uh, you know tailor the trip to best suit your needs. and catch a bunch of fish. So with that being said, thank you. I'll see you in that next video. Peace out.